Hello everyone, this is Gene Netch, and today I'm excited to review past SAT math questions. Now these math questions are coming from real past SATs. Number four, the ordered pair, three negative one, satisfies which of the following inequalities? When you get one of these which of the following satisfies things, they're asking three negative one, is it true for the cases one, two, three? Well, let's see. <clears throat> If I plug 3 into x and negative 1 into y, I get 3 minus 3 is 0. 0 is not bigger than 0, so false. 2 times 3 is 6. 3 times negative 1 is 3. 3 is bigger than 2. True. 3 uh, minus 1 is 2, and 2 is not bigger than 0. False. So answer is B, number 2 only. <clears throat> That's the only one where this is true. All right, so then we're given this ex uh, equation, 8x minus 8yz plus 2 equals 74. What is the value of x minus yz? So what they're asking is, can we find the value of these variables in this combination? So the first one would be to get rid of this 2. Uh, using algebra, negative 2. Then we would factor out an 8, which means take it out. And it's the opposite of distribution, if you're curious. So then we have 8 times x minus yz, still equals 72. Now you got to divide by 8 to get rid of that 8. And then we get what they, we were looking for. x minus yz is 9. So our answer is C. This one's fun. So a chef trimmed off the fat of a steak and was left with a steak weighing 8.8 .8 ounces. So steak, it lost a percentage, right? It, it lost some percent, maybe 10, maybe 10, 20, 30, I don't know. And now it's this, now it's 8.8 .8 ounces. If the weight of the fat, which is the thing it lost, was equal to 12%, and remember, it lost 12% of the original weight. What was the original weight in ounces of steak? So we don't know what this is, so you call it X. Steak original ounce X. Now you need to know this equation for percent of change, and I'm going to give you homework on that. Second minus first divided by first. And an easy way to remember it is 2, 1, 1. Second minus first divided by first. So we're going to take this second stake, which is 8.8, .8, minus the first stake, which is x, divided by x itself, which is the first stake, should equal negative 0.12 because that describes the amount of fat that was burned off or the amount of mass that the stake lost. So now we have an algebraic expression with only one variable, and we're good to solve. So this divided by x is the issue you need to focus on. We multiply everything by x over 1, or just x. So x divided by x cancels out, and we're left with 8.8 .8 minus x. Good. Now this side turns into negative 0.12 times x. Good to go. Now using algebra, you're going to plus x to this side. Boom. Or plus x from this side to this side, sorry. And you're left with 8.8 .8 equals, so if you do negative 0.12 plus 1 in your calculator, you will get 0.88x. Sorry, my typo. That's a 0.88x. So then, see, I cut up on myself. You divide by 0.88 itself, divide by 0.88. So in your calculator, you need to do 8.8 .8 divided by 0.88, and you'll get 10. Answer is C, 10 ounces. And remember this equation, 2, 1, 1, that's percent change, 2, 1, 1, and it, it accommodates for plus or down, uh, up or down, plus or minus. And I'll give you homework on it so you don't forget it. Number 14, number 14, George recorded his distance from home over a five period, over a five hour period. So here's the time, 1, 2, 3, 4, 5. This is the distance from home. So let's look at what happened in the first hour. We are getting further away from home to nine, coming back closer in the first hour. We were about five miles away from home, five and a half. We got a little bit closer to home, a little bit further away from home, kind of hung out, got further away from home, and then we came home. So let's look at number one, because what we're looking for, which of these is not true about what we just analyzed? George's distance from home increased at a constant rate during the first hour of the five hour period. Well, let's look at that. So he was going away from home and then closer to home. Does that sound like a, uh, the George's distance from his home increased at a constant rate? That's false. So answer A right away. 
All right, this is a classic SAT problem. So you're probably tired going into this and the devil's in the details. So like literally how they phrase the question is it's, it's how they get us. Cause the math is so simple. I'm subtracting two numbers, but what two numbers? All right, so the scatter plot above shows data from 10 accounts. I gotta figure out what the 10 accounts are. They're actually the dots. Uh, by, opened by a company along with the line of best fit. Okay, here's the line of best fit, obviously. Okay, for the account that contains the least amount of money. Okay, that's this one and this one. These two accounts have a thousand bucks. Which of the following is the closest to what? To the difference of the actual amount, actual amount, and the amount predicted by the line. All right, so it's a trick to go here because you can't compare this account to that account because these are two actual accounts. They're not saying subtract two actual accounts. They're saying actual accounts. So this one's out because this is actually on the line. We need an actual account minus the prediction. All right, prediction minus the account. Look, there it is. 2,200 minus 1,000 gives us answer D. Classic SAT question. You have to read very carefully before you do any math. Number 19, uh, scatter plot, height in centimeters for both the drop and bounce, uh, best fit data according to the line of best fit, which of the following is the closest to the predicted instruction increase bounce height? Of over 100, I remember this question. So here's 200, over 200 we increase what? 40. So it makes sense that over 100 we need to increase only 20. Answer B. This is a slope question. Rise over run. Increase over run. Rise over run. Number 23. It's a statistics question. All right, so the World Bank measures the amount of land devoted to agriculture among all 196 countries in the world. Useless. You don't need it. <laughs> the results from nine of the countries are given in the table above. Here are the results. The median percent of agricultural land for all 196 countries is this 34.95 number. So that represents these all 196 countries. We're only looking at nine of that, a very small fraction. And they're, they're asking us, what is the difference? Again, that difference question. That means we have to subtract something in the end. Difference. Between the median percent of agricultural land for these nine and the median of all 196, which they told us is that. So here's the median of 196, and we had to find the median of this 9. In order to find a median of something, you have to order them from least to greatest. So I did it. There's 0 0.6, 7 7.2, yada, yada, yada. And then after you finish it, you I, I suggest you count to make sure you have 9 entries. Otherwise you, otherwise, you missed one. I have 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, 6, 7, 8, 9. Then you cross them off one or two at a time. Boom, boom, bam, bam. Boom, boom, bam, bam. And you're left with the median. It literally means number in the middle when it's ranked least to greatest. Okay, median of the data, found it. Median of the 196 countries, they gave it to us. Subtract them, you get 1.1, answer A. Number 28 involves the equation of a circle. Okay, so you graph the circle and they're asking us uh, which dot is not on the circle. So once on, I mean, the center is here because this negative two makes it positive two because the equation is minus h. This positive five makes it go down five and then you use a radius of six, draw a circle. And then two five, here's two, five is up here. So that's not on the, on the circle. The raw score of a certain standardized test is determined by, okay, here we go, pause. Raw score equals subtracting one fourth of the number subtracting one-fourth of wrong from the number of correct. Let's pause. So you have raw score equals correct minus one-fourth times wrong. Really critically, you go one thing at a time. If a student answered 30 questions, what does that mean? Okay, so you got 30 questions correct, so I substitute. And received a raw score of 20, substitute. How many questions did the, answer, did he, the student answer incorrectly? One-fourth X. Perfect. To get rid of this uh, first uh, low-hanging fruit, algebra, uh, minus 30, minus 30, right? We get negative 10 equals negative 1 fourth x. To get rid of this negative 1 fourth in front of x, we multiply by negative 1 fourth. 
The negative times the negative makes it positive, good. And 4 over 4 is good, 1. All right, and we do that to the other side. So negative 4 times negative 10 is 40. 40. Answer 40 questions incorrectly. Okay, so we go from English to setting up an equation, algebra, finding the unknown. On of the first, one of the first diets to limit the intake of carbo har carbohydrates was prescribed by Dr. William Harvey in 1862. This diet consisted, I mean, this is history, so I'm going to discard it. I don't need it. The diet consisted of three meals a day containing equal amounts of protein per meal. Pause. Three meals a day, A, B, C, are my three meals a day. Since they're the same, equal amounts of protein, I'm just going to make it X. And if it's three meals, three X plus X plus X, 3x, right? Good to go. Now, if protein contains four dietary calories per gram, pause. There it is. Protein equals four dietary calories per gram. You got to write these things down as math, like data things that you can use. Consisted of 673 dietary calories per protein meal. How much protein to the nearest ounce was in each meal? All right, so we have three meals. We have 3x has to equal 3 times 673 because you're consisted of 673 dietary calories per meal. So this number gives us dietary calories per meal. Okay, solve for x. Boom. x is 673 dietary calories. Right? Now, we're not looking for dietary calories. That's why I keep saying that. We're looking for protein. How much protein to the nearest ounce? So I go back to this. Protein equals that. So if there's four in each, we have to divide by four to get back to protein. And then you get an answer. 168.25 ounces of protein, ounces, OZ, protein per meal. 33, what is the slope of the line below? In order to find the slope, you're gonna need two points, especially with a line. So I'm gonna take this point and this point. This will be the first point, and I'm gonna use the second point. The equation for slope, and slope is often defined as m, or is defined as m, is y2 minus y1. What does that look like? Well, that looks like 6, because it's second y, minus minus 3. There it is. Uh, all over the second x, 20 over 3, minus minus 16 over 3. So 6 plus 3 is 9. 20 thirds plus 16 thirds is 46 thirds. Now you have a number divided by a fraction. So we're going to turn that number in, um, into a fraction if you want and multiply by the converse, which is the flip of the division. So we don't divide fractions, we multiply by the flip or converse. So if you multiply 9 and 3, you get 21 all over 46, and that is the slope of these lines. That means we went up 21 units all the way up here over 46, which should be like somewhere over here. Number 34. All right, they gave us two equations, all right? They're saying negative 9 minus a is b. They're saying a squared minus 6a minus 9 is also b. Okay, this has to jump out as an exciting thing for you. If the ordered pair a, b satisfies the system of equations above, what is one possible value of a? What they're saying is there's a point, so this is a line. a and b could have been x and y. This line looks like something like this. Let's say this line looks something like that. Okay. Now this equals B, we're going to hinge the whole answer on it because B equals B. So we're going to set this side equal to that side. Now plus 9 plus 9. That gets rid of this. And gets rid of that too, which is nice. So you're left with A squared minus 6A equals negative A plus A plus A. You're left with zero here, okay? So you have a squared minus five a equals zero. Factor out the a, you're left with a times a minus five is zero. That means a could be zero, because you put zero in here, the whole thing is zero, which is zero. Or if you put five into here, you get zero times five, which is still zero. Now we're not gonna consider zero as a real answer, which is one possible value of a. You can consider each one zero, but I chose five because it's the more complex or juicy one. So answer's five. Thanks for watching. And remember, if you enjoyed this video, if you found it helpful, hit the subscribe button, hit the like video. And if you want to schedule your own lesson, you know how to find me.